Kaya, I'm Katie West, I'm an Indjibrandi woman on my mother's side and I'm living on Noongar Baladong country in York. Uh, with my art practice, uh, a underlying idea and thing I do is natural dyeing. Um, so that involves uh, walking and collecting plant material that's already blown to the ground, so bark and leaves. Um, and I use that material to hot dye in the winter, so boiling up a pot of water, adding that material. And then in the warm months I'll do solar dyeing, which involves putting those materials in a jar and letting it change colour through the sun. For We Hold You Close, I've been working with curator Eloise Sweetman, who's also uh, from Perth originally and is now based in Rotterdam. We've known each other since uh, 2016. Uh, she noticed my work at Next Wave Festival and uh, showed that video, Decolonist, in, um, in the Netherlands. So since then, I've had the opportunity to show in, in previous group exhibitions with her. And um, I think we just have some of the same feelings and ideas about the purpose of art making. Um, and I think an interest in, um, in meditation and yeah, I guess pushing the possibilities within a gallery space. We Hold You Close, it's a large scale installation and it does feel like a coming together of all these different things I've been doing. There's elements of the natural dyeing in textile works that will create a space as curtains and a canopy to view a video work. The video work, while quite different to that first decolonist video, it feels like a progression of that idea. My intent is to lull people into that space through sound um, and, uh, and my voice as well. So there's a bit of um, uh, yeah, a suggestion on uh, what the space is about, how you might feel in the space. And I'm also uh, making string with a couple of different techniques, so it's slightly instructional as well. But in making the video, it's also, I'm using that time of filming to really enjoy the process of string making myself and, and notice my progress in relearning that technique. With that work, there's also going to be a making space and a tea space. People at certain times will be able to make a cup of tea and my intent with that is really to create a familiar space through drinking tea. But the tea drinking is also uh, related to the natural dyeing as well. So um, I'm thinking about how uh, out well our relationship to plants and uh, how we are infused with country with what we consume. And next to the tea space there's a making space so uh, people will who visit will be able to have their cup of tea with them while they um, have a go at making some string out of uh, repurposed fabric. So We Hold You Close, it's really about the kind of intimacies that get created between people when you're uh, doing something like making string together. So I think this kind of um, Familiarity with the people you're doing an activity with happens in all sorts of circumstances but for me I'm interested in, in string because uh, making string with plant fibre is something that my grandmothers and ancestors have done for a long time and I, I feel like it's a way for me to reconnect with, with them. Um, yeah, through, through that process. So the We Hold You Close is kind of like uh, thinking about holding all of these generations previous um, close in that, through that action, but also thinking about future generations. Like I, I really want that string making technique and weaving to be really present in my family life going forward. And I'm also interested in this idea of, um, of making kin, uh, which I think Donna Haraway first coined. Um, I think we need to get better at getting along, <laughs> basically. And, um, and I, I'm always amazed when there's a, a weaving workshop 
at an event, it just brings, it brings strangers together. And, um, and also doing it in, in a gallery context as well. I guess growing up, uh, I've had the experience of uh, not being sure if I'm welcome in, in um, certain gallery spaces. And I know uh, I have family members who um, wonder if they're okay to go in or not. And I think even just, uh, there's a lot, a lot of people, if you're not embedded in the art community or studied art, it is, um, it is kind of confronting. So I am interested in making that space just a bit more familiar to people and really, I think, put, getting the message across that um, art is so subjective and about emotional response and I think um, sometimes we forget that. In making these textile pieces for this large space, I've been thinking about the, the tactility as I've been making, but also uh, making these pieces with the idea that people who visit can also touch these works. With that, I just, uh, again, it's another way to add to the experience of being familiar with a space within a gallery space and putting some ideas into practice from someone else who I also collaborate with, Faye and De Evie. We work on a project called uh, Museum Incognita and with that we started off with the question, what would a decolonised museum be and feel like? Um, so uh, really it's through her, her influence that I'm um, uh, yeah, playing with this idea of allowing everyone to touch everything um, in the show. The dilly bags are significant to me because uh, they're something that were made by my grandmothers and, and ancestors for a very long time and uh, they're I guess significant to my life because it's a, it's a process of making that I haven't inherited directly through uh, my mother's stolen generations experience and also just the disruption to um, our ways of, of life in, in the Pilbara region for, through the expansion of mining and, and pastoral stations as well. Uh, so with this form and this way of making, it's like the way I can make dilly bags at the moment with the resources I have access to. I hope that visitors go away feeling a sense of calmness and I'm also hopeful that people might be reminded of the, the making techniques or making by hand techniques that exist in their own ancestry. Uh, and I think string and textiles is basically present in, in everyone's ancestry, so it's kind of making that point. I've also been thinking about the, the pace of our existence now, so how production of uh, material is so accelerated and uh, I wonder with that idea, oh, well so much being made for us and in this fast pace how that has affected our relationships to each other. Um, so with the string making it's an opportunity to slow down and connect with others and recall our own ancestries and activities around around that slow pace um, and with that I think there's a larger picture within this circumstance we're all in uh, as we experience climate change. I do wonder about how these slow making techniques will become relevant to our lives again in the future and also hoping that people consider how these slow making techniques making by our own hands is complementary to a healthy climate.